All right, guys. Okay, we're going to do vascular tissue, transport, or xylem and flow. Okay. So, remember this thing? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. I can't even remember who made this for me. It was so old. Will someone please make me a new one? How do I make it? <laughs> oh, they know it's fine. They used plastic and then lots of straw. And they were trying to show the transport, how, um, how the transport tissue changes, you know, the shape of it as it, as it goes through the plant. So in the root, the xylem and the phloem is in the middle. We'll get to that again. Do you remember the star shape of the xylem and then the phloem mm -hmm. in between? Yes. Alright, so they've got the xylem and the phloem in the middle here. And then how the vascular bundles, the veins, how they separate out into separate veins with xylem and phloem in the stem. Now, I did show you online the difference between monocot and dicot. But we don't need to do all that detail. So maybe you remember there were lots of little veins in the monocot stem that looked like clown's faces. Yes. Okay. Where were the rest of you? All right, but in a dicot stem, the veins are in a circle around the edge of the stem. That's where we're going to leave it. And then how, if there's a, a leaf stalk, how the, um, the, the veins, the xylem and the phloem would pass through that leaf stalk and then into, that's the mid vein. Um, the midrib it's sometimes called. Alright, so that's this part. Oh, no, sorry. Okay. So the middle there, that dark line in the middle, that's the mid vein. And then here's the branch vein. So on the leaf here, there are the little branch veins. So this is a cross section to part of a mid vein or a midrib and a little branch vein. Alright. And I know I'm, I think I made a mistake in the, the one video, or did I? I can't remember now. And I said the one, which one's always at the top of a xylem or phloem? Which one's at the top of a leaf vein? Mm. Look, it's xylem. And I think I said the other way around. And then I realized afterwards. So xylem's always at the top and phloem below. Don't you remember me saying that? Yes. Phloem below. Okay. All right. So how, how do xylem and phloem differ? So differ. Well, they also develop from parenchyma cells. So in a tiny little embryo, it wouldn't have any xylem and phloem. Then as the, as the leaf and the root grows out, it's going to develop xylem and phloem. And in fact, that right at the back there, a fern plant, the one that's kind of against the wall with lots of little leaflets, they don't even have xylem and phloem. They more, um, they're not as advanced as modern day, you know, they are, they're not flowering plants, they're something called... Uh, you know, I'm going back to Rigio to I, I remember doing that many years ago. So they are more um, simplified plants. They don't even have xylem and phloem. Okay, so only more advanced plants like mealies and you know, potatoes and apple trees have xylem and phloem. All right. So how do xylem and phloem differ? Well, if you remember back to that original tree diagram, we said they are complex tissues, yes, because there are a number of different types of cells. But we only looked at the two main ones for xylem and phloem. Um, but there could be sclerenchyma fibers, and there could be parenchyma cells and whatever in between as well. So xylem, okay, I'm going to use this one again, because xylem is made up of two types of cells. And yes, the sclerenchyma fibers, they are very similar to the, the long, thin xylem cells, which are called what? Sorry? Vessels. So you get vessels and you get tracheids. Okay, and the tracheids are the long, thin, pointed ones, just like sclerenchyma fibers. They're the same. But the vessels are wider. And they might, okay, they might be sort of slanted at the ends. I'm just drawing sort of three-dimensional. And they might have, okay, so wait, let's just slow down a bit. So tracheids are long, thin, and pointed. They're sometimes said to be tapered, just like sclerenchyma fibers. So they also have lignified walls, lots of lignin, but they also have pits of cellulose. cellulose. But that's not the only pattern, and I really did not go into this online, and I usually don't go into it 
a lot of detail either, but they could have other wall thickening. They could have spiral shaped wall thickening with more cellulose in between. So that's not going to be as strong as that one. Or they could have one where they've got little rings, it's called annula, little rings. Imagine, rings. So maybe if I draw it like that. Rings of, um, wrong colour. Rings of lignin, okay, with cellulose in between. So there's lots of different patterns. So here, they've, I've just I found a diagram of um, trackers where it looks like they're all the pitted type, but there could be other types of wall thickening, and I just think that's a little bit too much detail at grade 10 level. Okay, so there are the longs and trackers, and then you've got the wider vessel, and they could be open-ended, or the, it's, it's almost like, okay, wait, let me show you here. So there's the vessel, it's wider, it's got sort of a hexagonal shape in cross sections, so it could be open-ended, or it could have like a, you know the drain pipe by, in the sink of your bath? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. That? Did I make any see? Where was that? Okay. Two main types of cells, tube cell, tube like xylem vessels and see. And long tapering xylem trachea. Yes. Oh. Okay. Oh, there's that thing on. Alright, so at the top here, there are two main cell types, tube like xylem vessels, the wider ones that could be open ended where that cell wall of cellulose breaks down completely, or it could have um, a plate where the red here is lignin, but there's little, op not openings, but little areas of cellulose so that it's easier for water to pass through them. Alright, so xylem. Tube like xylem vessels and long tapering xylem tracheas. The cells are hollow, they don't have cytoplasm, they're dead. They're just supporting, like those concrete um, pillars in a building. Um, and they lie end to end. So if I had lots of these, think of the pipes that they put underground. Have you seen them putting those big water pipes in under the ground? Mm -hmm. So lots of them, end to end. Now you've got a very long tube for water to pass through. And the xylem tracheas, they tend to be like staggered. You don't, no, no, you don't have to know all this. So they are staggered like that. Okay, this pen is now finished. Okay, they could be staggered and they've got part lignin, part cellulose. All right, and because there are bits of cellulose, the water can pass through. Okay, but these ones, the xylem vessels, they are wider and they would be placed end to end and it's easy for water to pass through. So you can see which one would transport more water, yes. These ones and these would provide even more support. And now that it's going to start raining, remember we, in the one video I talked about um, you know, the wood and when there's more little holes and do you remember that? Mm. Okay, we'll get to that. Alright, so let's just finish here. The cell walls are pour, pour, uh, pour, 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 perforated with pits, or there could be these other little patterns of lignification. Don't need to remember that at all. And that the, the little pits of cellulose, just like with the sclerenchyma cells, that's going to allow water to pass through. They don't form a barrier. So, can, oh no, hang on. And um, if you think the xylem's, yeah, the xylem's going, the, the veins at least are, you know, passing up the stem, so it's easy for water to move to these tissues, parenchyma, this way, that, okay, water can pass through them and up them. Got it? Okay. Now, functions, obviously transport water and dissolve mineral salts from the root to wherever else, and because the walls are lignified, they support the plant, and they form wood of a plant in concentric rings. So when this little green stem makes more xylem, it makes rings of xylem, and these rings of xylem are called annual rings. So every year, another ring of xylem gets added. Do you remember that video? Yes. yes. Yeah, I'll never ask you that, but, but they, they both do both. But yeah. 
Can uh, xylem vessels have the hold at the top? Yeah, xylem vessel, it's like it was a full-on parenchyma you know, cell. Then the cell wall became lignified and little bits of cellulose were left. Sometimes the whole end wall broke down, sometimes it didn't, and there were you know, gaps of cellulose, and the rest was lignified. Okay, and then tracheas can all the like go through there. Can go through them or this way to you know from here to parenchyma along the way. Okay. As it's going up the stem. Okay. Yeah. Alright. What else have I got? So what are we filling in here? Annual, Annual rings. rings. Okay, and oh he's taking Annual rings. And this is also, I mean, why do I keep drawing it in red? Do you ever open up a plant and see red? Why am I drawing it in red? Because lignin stains up red. There's a specific stain that you add and it stains up red. The lignin takes on a red colour. But you're not going to open a stem and see red. Alright. So this is a cross section and you can very easily see the wider vessel and the thinner little tracheas in between and they're hollow. Okay. And I know this is a bit dense, but there you can see the wider vessel. And these are the tracheas, and they've even got some parenchyma in between. But remember, we're just looking at the two main types. Okay, and that's xylem. Happy? Yes. All right. Phloem. Phloem transports? Sugars. And yeah, phloem for food. Sugars, amino acids. Do you remember that aphid question in your textbook? Gee, guys. Yeah, I actually opened right up there. Look, do you remember this question? Page 87. Did you do the question? Yes. Mm, maybe you should. Okay, so the little aphid, you know the little green fly on roses and things and cabbages? And they poke their long stylus. I think it's called a proboscis. And they get the, uh, the sap, the sugars and the amino acids and that out of the plant. And there was a lovely little question about that. Okay. Right. Okay, so phloem, the food transporting tissue. Um, I'm still busy working. You can see here it says uh, mammalian tissues. I'm still busy working on that because I want to add one or two more things. Okay, so don't, well, you, you're not going to print it out. But people at home, don't print out animal tissues yet. I will put a new one on by next week. Okay, so phloem. What are the two main cell types again? They are called sieve tube cells and companion. the ones that hold hands, the companion cells. And here's my model. Do you remember these? Okay, so once again, they are parenchyma cells which become modified. All right? And also, it's very distinct under the microscope. You can easily spot um, phloem. Oh, we must just go back here. Oh, I can do this again. We must just show where xylem and phloem is in the model. All right, so if this is a parenchyma cell, what will the cell wall be made of? Cellulose. Cellulose. It's a normal cell. Okay? And in these cells, there's going to be a big vacuole in the middle because they're going to transport sugary sap. And it could be up or down, from the leaves, down, then they store it in the roots as starch, then it gets changed back to sugars, goes back to the flowers in spring. Okay, because at the moment the, the trees and that have been storing all their nutrients in sinks. Source is where it's made, sink is where it gets stored, and now they can break down those starches and sugars can go back up and make flowers and leaves. You see all the leaves sprouting. That's how I understand it. I mean, if I go and read a scientific journal, I might not be doing it so accurately, but that's okay. I mean, this is fine for us. So there's a thin lining of cytoplasm. Do you remember that? All right. And there's a sugary sap in the middle here. And just like, you know, the parenchyma cell, it, it could be, it has a, um, it could be open-ended, or there could also be like a little drain opening. And we call it a third plate. plate looks like the drain in your bath. So it's where that cellulose is broken down and there's these little holes in here. I could punch holes in here. So now that sugary sap could pass from cell to cell as it moves down the, um, down the phloem tissue. So yeah, so, so parenchyma cells have evolved. They became different parts and 
ferns don't have xylem and phloem, but flowering plants do. All right. So what have I said? Um, okay, so there's two main cell types. The tubular, hollow, tube-shaped cells called sieve tubes place end-to-end to form long conductive tubes forming part of the vein. The vein, the vascular bundle, is xylem and phloem. They have a little bit of cytoplasm near the edges, but they are missing nuclei. All right. So, what do they do? They transport dissolved organic food, like usually a sucrose, think of sugar cane, produced in the leaves and, well, glucose, then it gets changed into sucrose, to the rest of the plant, up or down, wherever it needs to go. But then they have helpers. And these are little parenchyma cells, long and thin, and they're called companion, companion cells. cells. And they help these cells to function because they have a nucleus. Okay? They help them, you know, with their metabolic activity to control what's happening. And if I put this here, they are the sieve tubes. And these, uh, when you take an educated guess, the ones that are smaller in between and look like they've got cytoplasm, those are the companion cells. And there's a bit of mucilage, stained up red. And I'm looking for a sieve plate. So here is the sieve tube cell, Oops. and there's the sieve plate. You, it's very easy to see that under the microscope. So, and phloem tends to stain up blue-green, so they draw it like that. So there would be the sieve tubes, no air spaces, and then some of them you might see the sieve plate, and then in between you might see little cells in cross-sections, the companion cells, and you might see some stained mucilage like over here. Where's the sieve plate? No, I'm not seeing it. I think it was in my PowerPoint. You okay. Here on our... Oh, okay. All right, guys, so that's xylem and phloem. And yes, uh, phloem, smaller living cells, they assist the function of the sieve tube cells by regulating and um, performing their metabolic activities. And there they come, they, they've got them drawn in between there, a little bit of red, they just use red. And there's the long tube like sieve tube cells as end to end. And that's it. Oh, it was in the photograph worksheet, remember? This one. Mm -hmm. Where you could see everything. So let's go, oh wait, models first. I'm getting sidetracked. So in the leaf. All right, there's the vein, that vein passing through the leaf. So what is this tissue? Okay, you're going to tell me now. What's this? Epidermis. epidermis. Upper epidermis? No. Lower epidermis. Okay, what's this? Palisade what? Parenchyma, long pillar-shaped cells. What's this? Spongy parenchyma. What's the strengthening tissue? Parenchyma. And there? Sclerenchyma. And this at the top, the xylem, and then a little bit of yellow, meristematous, okay? And then the blue, blue-green, phloem, phloem below. All right, the stem. Okay, going from the outside. Here, epidermis, dark green. Strengthening, unevenly Colleen. thickened wall looks like it looks like at the corners. Parenchyma. All of this, light green or white? Parenchyma. They're the vascular bundles. This thing sticking out the top there. Okay? So there's a number of veins or vascular bundles. Alright? Sure, this is heavy. Okay, on the outside there could be strengthening tissue. What type? Sclerenchyma. Then the blue. Phloem, then the yellow, meristematic, but it's not always in a ring like this. That develops if the plant becomes woody and, you know, it's not a green stem and then dies, a green, a 
plant for the green scene and then dies, like an annual plant. It carries on growing and makes wood the next year. So that ring of tissue, meristematic tissue, is going to make those annual rings the second, the third, etc. Yeah. So, okay. So usually it's just little vascular bundles like that with no meristematic tissue in between. That develops later from parenchyma. What's this? Xylem. Rays of xylem. Little, they point like little fingers into the middle. What's here? Here's that Yeah, you got it. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, what time? Quarter past. Mm -hmm. What should we do now? Should we look at this again? You know, there's a few other things I could show you here. Let's just do that. I know it is. Yeah. Okay. Um, what's it? You guys said the palisade of parenchyma. The little pillar shaped cells at the top of the leaf. Palisade, like a palisade thing. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Let's pull out the photograph for me. But I know it's hard to recognize stuff. But you remember, I did botany for three years. Okay, so it's easy for me. And I don't know everything. I mean, I could look and not be sure. But I won't give you difficult stuff. Okay? All right, so let's just look at this again. Now, what is distinctive about this tissue? Don't say colors yet. What is distinctive? The guard cell. So then immediately you know it is epidermis. All right. Here's the model. Mark photo reaction. So all of these other cells, you think, you think of a flat layer of epidermis. And they've got really odd shapes. So then you've got the guard cells. And yes, it's staying green, but that's staining green. Okay? We would know that there's only chloroplast in the guard cells. And the guard cells are a little bit open. They're sort of there, that one. Taken up the stain differently. But there's the stoma. You have an electron microscope picture. There's the stoma. You can't even see the whole edge of those two guard cells. Okay, happy. Yes. Now, I forgot. So, is it when the guard cells fill with water, do they open? Yeah. So, they initially, they, they close, or the stomas close, and as water moves into them, they swell, oh, they swell okay. up and open. They pull apart. But there's other theories, like the platinum so... Who doesn't know that? Alright. Then, I've given you... So, this is actually... One of these, part of that. That's what that is, and then some parenchyma around. Here you can see some parenchyma, little air spaces. Okay, so that's part of the vein or vascular bundle. So yeah, these red stained cells. Now you're not going to see red if I print a, a picture for you, but they red stained. So what does that indicate? What are the cell walls made of? Lignin. Lignin. They're more or less all the same size. There's not a very clear distinction to me between big and small. So it must be sclerenchyma. Like there, on, on the edge of the vein, running down the length. There, down the length on the one side of the vein. Right? Then. Would this, it be sclerenchyma fibers? Yes, sclerenchyma fibers. And there would be meristematic tissue and flowing. Right. So even I'm not really sure there. Okay, so that's um, sclerenchyma. Oh, and then at the bottom here, the tip of a root. I'm going to show this to you. I've got microscope size of this. Who's ever grown an onion from a bulb? Mm -hmm. Put it in a cup of water. Okay. 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 Ok
Okay, so a cup of water and you take a toothpick and you put the onion in oh, yes, this and the pointy thing and then it grows leaves and little roots. And it's like almost hairy, almost looks hairy. If you take that and put it on a microscope slide and just squash it a bit, put a cover slip on, do that. Okay, but this, this is done a bit neater. So near the tip, there's the merosomatic tissue. Can you see there's not much differentiation here? You don't know, you can't see xylem and phloem. And it's young, it's a growing tip. So these parenchyma cells will become xylem and phloem and calenchyma and sclerenchyma. But there's parenchyma cells that form the tip of the root, that is the root cap. I didn't ask you to label, but that's the root cap. And just there, where this nuclei looks very big, in tiny little cells, is merosomatic tissue. It's like a little circular region. Okay, then here, the root epidermis. Oh, it's at the top there. So there are the little roots sticking out. Root hair, sorry. So, oh, yeah. Okay, so there's the tip of the root, and then a little bit further back from, from that one, you see little root hairs growing out or part in the modified epidermal cells. And that's them from the side. Just that little part. There's the cells there, and these are the root hairs. And that's taken with um, what type of microscope? Light. Mm. Quite the dimensional. Oh. oh, wait. Yeah. Scanning electron microscope. But there it's taken with a light wow. microscope. Just some of them sticking out. You can see the epidermal cells. I think those might even be parenchyma inside, and there's the epidermis, and there's the root hair. Root hair is part of the cell. All right, the prettiest one. Looks like bubble wrap. Straight away, you're going to see this. Air spaces. So parenchyma, thin walls. Yes, they're cytoplasm, just not stained. Air parenchyma in a water plant. Parenchyma cells with huge air spaces in a water lily leaf. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll tell you now which topic this is on Google Classroom. Alright, now what have I got? Now I've got that whole vein or vascular bundle. So, one of these, top to bottom. Okay, oh. I think we mark the rest of the next lesson. So what tissue is this? Fluorine. Fluorine What's this? Flow. Flow, yeah. Looks like flow. Alright, what are these? Well, what tissue though? Xylem. xylem. Oh, I see, I've labeled them differently. Sorry, you're right. It's a xylem trachead and a xylem vessel. vessel. There's a very different, very big difference between the two. Yes, there are some big sclerenchyma cells, but they're not as distinctly big as xylem vessels. Okay, plants, yeah, they kind of overlaps. And then here, around, all the tissue around, parenchyma. Okay. So then I took out, I took out that region, this region over here. Okay, so between the xylem and the parenchyma, there doesn't look like there's merosomatic tissue there. This is phloem, no. because straight away you see that seep tube plate and some mucilage. There's mucilage there, little companion cells in between. I'm guessing you little one in between. It's like an educated guess. Big vessels. Okay, is that the end? There's one more. One more. Oh, yeah. Palenchyma. It's really hard to find a decent picture of Palenchyma. I try every year. The internet doesn't have nice slides, but you can more or less see. Looks like there's extra thickening at the corners. If I did this, I could maybe guess where the cells are. Looks like they've got extra thickening at the corners. Sort of. Okay, extra cellulose. 
and they're still living. There's still cytoplasm in the middle there. Okay, guys, are we happy? Yeah. All right, so, yeah, I'm done. So tomorrow, we'll have a look. Just um, check your line diagrams, bring your line diagrams in. The one part that worries me is that whole PowerPoint on transport and transpiration and guttation. Do you remember that? No. Guess what? We're going to do that as well. But quickly, okay? I'm not going to take as long as I normally would. All right. How the water and the food moves through the plant. We've sort of done the line diagrams now, but we'll just have a look at them again. Because I've been showing you the models already. And remember, well, the rest is actually more in your textbook. This was a summary table, and then it's more in your textbook. <laughs>